Then I have Cirrus Logic, bought it July 12th of 22 for $843.65. Sold it August 5th of 22 for $1,777.31. That was a $933.66 gain, or a 110.66% gain in one month. Hey guys, in this video, we want to talk a little bit about options. In a previous video I did, I had to break down some of the possibilities of what you can accomplish with options and as I started to break down the proof I said you know what I should put this into a separate video so some people can be aware of just what things you're able to accomplish with options so we're gonna look at the four things you can do with options in terms of buying and selling calls and puts First, what are options? Options are basically promises that you can buy or sell. If you buy a call option, you're buying a promise that you could buy 100 shares of a stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. If you sell a call option, you're selling a promise that someone can buy. 100 shares of a specific stock from you at a specific price on or before a specific date. If you buy a put option, you're buying a promise that you could buy 100 shares of a stock at a specific price on or before a specific date, even if the price dropped. And that's significant. You'll understand why I say that later. And lastly, if you sell a put option, you're selling someone a guarantee that you will buy 100 shares of a stock at or underneath a specific price on or before a specific date. All other combinations, such as covered calls, etc., is a combination of multiple to hedge risk. In other words, maybe you're buying a call and buying a put at the same time or something like that. But those four are the main. Everything else is combinations. So first we want to look at selling calls. And we're going to look at some real life examples. We have Metafast. Now, the stock price for Metafast in this exam, these are real examples that I looked at in my brokerage account. Metafast at the time that I looked at these figures was $61.17 a share. If I was to sell a one month call, one month, on Metafast with a strike price of $65 and a bid price of $1.65. That means $1.65 times 100. I will collect $165 just for selling that call. Now, Metafast is at $61.17. If it moves sideways and doesn't go past $65, I keep my 100 shares and I keep the $165, which is a 2.69% return in one month. If it moves down a little, I still have my shares. I still keep the $165.
if it moves up to, let's say, $64, I still own my shares and I still keep the $165. But let's say Metafast moves up. Let's say it moves up to $70 a share. What happens in $170 a share? Well, no, $70 a share. What happens in that case? In that case, I still keep the $165 plus the money that it made from $61.17 all the way up to $65. That's mine as well. So I make $165 for selling the option and $383 for it moving up to the um, $65. What about Hershey Company? Hershey Company is $190.55. Strike price, $195. Bid price, $4. What does that mean? If I was to sell a call option on Hershey Company with $195 strike price, I would make $400 just for selling the option. That's a 2.09% return on my money. Now, we already know what happens if it moves down a little, moves sideways, or it only goes up to, say, 194 or 194.50. What happens if it moves up past 195? Any profit past 195 belongs to the person who bought the call, but everything up to 195 is mine as well. So I'll make 400 for selling the option plus 445 for the money it made moving up from 190.55 to 195. Then we have Genuine Parts Company. $247 strike price with a 247.50 strike price. We could make $320. That's 1.29% return in a month. And then that's not counting the $50 that we'd also make if it moved up past $274.50. And I actually did two for Genuine Parts Company. I did one with a 247.50 strike price, and then I did one with a 250 strike price. 250 strike price would be cheaper. I'd only collect 225 on the option. But then, if the stock moves up past 250, I also collect $300. And that 225 would be 0.91%, less than 1%, but that's 0.91% in one month, where there's some banks that are giving you that much or less for a year to have your money in there. So we looked at selling calls. Now let's look at buying calls. Buying calls are riskier. Selling calls are safer because you, out of four things that could happen, three of them leave you successful. You're successful if it goes up past the stock price. You're successful if it goes down but a little. You're successful if it goes sideways. You're only unsuccessful if it drops significantly. Buying calls, there's four ways things can go, but you're only successful in the event of one. 
If it moves up past the strike price, you're successful. If it goes down, you're not successful. If it moves sideways, you're not successful. If it moves up a little but doesn't pass the strike price, you're not successful. So the risk is working against you, whereas selling is low risk, buying is higher risk. But let's look at some of the returns you can get from selling, or from buying, I should say. With selling, we was talking about 2% returns in one month. Now, what we have, Ali Bargain Outlet. Ali Bargain Outlet, I bought it on May 19th of 22. Sold it on July 11th of 22. That's two months. I bought it for $742.65, sold it for $2,966.28. I had a gain of $2,223.63 in two months. That was a gain of $299. Point forty two per cent. Then we have Union Pacific. Union Pacific, I actually bought it on April sixth of twenty three. It wasn't moving the way I wanted it to, so I sold it on April tenth of twenty three. And that was a four day period. I sold it for sixty-two dollar and sixty-six gain. Sixty-six sixty-two dollars and sixty-six cents. That's a three point three zero percent gain in four days. We go down to Johnson and Johnson. I bought it on April third of twenty-three, sold it on May fourth of twenty-three. I bought it for $860.66, sold it for $1,162.33. That's a gain of $301.67, or 35.05%. And that was a period of a month. Then we go to Akamai. Akamai Technologies. I bought it on May 4th of 23 for $604.66. I sold it on May 4th of 23. This one was the big game. For $678.33. That was a gain of 12 point eighteen percent it um wasn't moving the way I would have liked. And lastly AMN Healthcare. AMN Healthcare was a loss. So I lost a hundred and thirty one dollars and thirty three cents on that for a sixteen point forty four percent loss. We have applied material I bought that on July 18th of 2022 for $1,165 and sold it on August 8th of 22, one month later, for $1,809.31. That is a $644.31 gain or a 55 Point thirty percent gain in one month. Then I have Cirrus Logic. Bought it July twelfth of twenty two for eight hundred and forty three dollars and sixty five cents. Sold it August fifth of twenty two for one thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars and thirty one cents. That was a $933.66 gain 
or 110.66% gain in one month. And lastly, I have NVMI or Nova Limited. I bought them July 11th of 22 for $1,100.65, sold them August 3rd of 22, one month later, for $2,053.30. That's a $952.65 gain, or 86.55% gain, once again in one month's time. So buying options carries more risk, but when things go right buying options, the gains are significant. Now, something I was looking at before and then things sort of went haywire with the markets, and I'll probably do a video on this at some time, which is and the your um this is all actually talking about two different ways risky and safer of moving from one thousand to one million, and that's just by hitting fifty percent on your money with options every month. Now this is speculative because the brokerage account has to allow you to get the amount of options that you would need to do this. But in terms of the math, it's purely possible. And we spoke about buying calls and selling calls. Now we're gonna speak about selling puts. And I'm actually showing you a screenshot of one of the companies I analyzed. Because if you look at the channel, you'll see that I do analysis on all of the stocks on my watch list or our watch list. And if anybody drops a note in the comments asking me to, to provide the video analysis on any of the stocks I talk about, I'll do that and upload it in the channel. In any event, by look by doing the analysis on the companies you can actually see what the low pe ratio is for each year and if i remove 2020 which was the covid lockdowns I can see the lowest PE in those last five years was 13.57. If I multiply that by the earnings per share, 8.58, it gives me 115.57, which tells me that in all likelihood, this stock is not going to go lower than 115.57 because in order to do that, the current PE, which is 16.73, you see right here, would have to drop below the lowest PE in the last five years, right? So I can multiply the low PE by the current earnings per share and get an idea of where that stock, the lowest that that stock is possibly going to fall to. Not definitely, but possibly. When I can do that, I can sell puts for an option because when you sell an option put, you're making somebody a guarantee that if a stock falls to this price, I'm gonna buy a hundred shares of it. So for example, 
let's say I calculated this number and it came out to, let's say, 148. Then I could look in my brokerage account and see how much money I would make for selling a put on genuine parts company expiring in one month for uh for uh with a hundred and forty eight dollar strike price now if the stock falls below one forty eight I have to buy those hundred shares but I may have just got paid $150, $200 just for buying 200 shares. Usually if you buy 100 shares, you're just paying for them and that's it. In this case, you're getting paid and you're paying for them. So you're possibly getting them about $200 cheaper. But what if the stock never falls to 148? If the stock doesn't fall to 148, but it moves up from that point, I don't get to buy the 100 shares, at least for that price, but I keep the $200. So I just got paid for promising to buy 100 shares of a stock at a specific price but didn't have to buy them and still got paid and this is an excellent strategy to use for stocks that you'd like to own anyway so that if they fall to the price and you buy them you got a hundred shares of the stock you already wanted to buy but now you got paid for buying them and if they don't fall to that price, you still got paid. So that's selling puts. And then we have buying puts. If you think a stock is going to go down, you can buy a put. If I think the market is going to start dropping, I usually suggest buying a put on the SPY, the S&P 500. That's my preference. I usually buy puts on the S&P 500. It could be the Dow. It could be the NASDAQ. For some reason, I'm stuck on the S&P 500. But the S&P 500 is 500 of the biggest companies on the stock market. So in a sense, they represent the entire market. And when you see a lot of stocks dropping, usually you know the S&P 500, the Dow and the NASDAQ may be dropping as well. So if I see the other stocks in my portfolio are dropping, I may get a put on the SPY because that's dropping as well. The S&P 500 may be going down, but the put that I have on it is going up in value because when you when you buy a put, your money goes up as the stock price drops. So those are the four plays that we have in options. We have selling calls, buying calls, selling puts, and buying puts. And like you said, buying puts may be, buying calls may be more risky, and buying puts as well may be a little more risky. Buying of options may be more risky, but they can make you a lot more money when they go right. Selling calls and puts is more so fixed income. It's lower returns, but still higher than stocks. But it's lower returns, but it's safer because it gives you three out of four ways of coming out ahead. Now, a few 
um, videos to look out for on the channel is which is better, stocks or options? It explains both of those in depth more. And it also gives you the advantages and disadvantages of each. And with this week's option picks, I pick an option each week and track its progress going along as I own it for you guys to see and to know what things, what fundamentally sound stocks you can pick from to choose an option. We also have what is a call option. These thumbnails will be changed soon, but they'll still be on the channel. What is a put option? And bid and ask explained. You should understand bid and ask prices if you're going to be dealing with stocks in general, but particularly options. So that's it, guys. You have a great day, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.